Hey everybody, welcome to another React Wednesdays. I'm TJ Van Toll. I work as a developer advocate as Progress. And we have a special guest host today, Michael Abriola. Mike, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I actually, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying being the just guest host uh, version of this today. So yeah, <laughs> Michael Abriola with Digital Primates. TJ and I have done several of these together, but I rarely get to play the guest host role. So that's my, that's my job today. Yeah. So if you are new here, React Wednesdays, this is a weekly stream. We do this every Wednesday, as the name implies, one Eastern. And I wanted to, do, 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 if I can find the right button there, tell you about some of our upcoming shows. So like I said, we do this at the same time. So if you're watching this on YouTube, maybe consider joining us live on Twitch. It's kind of fun. You get to hang out with cool people in the React world and ask questions. So in a minute here, we're going to welcome Jeremy Warden. We're going to talk about React context today. but I just wanted to point you at the website, which I'm going to drop in the chat. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can find it in the description below. Next week, we're going to be talking React 3 Fiber, which is kind of fun. I, I, I love demos I see of this, so I'm excited yeah. to talk about that. Uh, in two weeks, we're going to be talking some stuff about the React developer tools, which is another thing that I feel uh, like I probably should know more about. So that should be pretty fun. And I'll also give you a shout out, we're doing a kind of special React Wednesdays event here, kind of super secret. But if you go to the website, you can <laughs> learn super secret, but also like very visible. Super secret, but very visible and in red. Yeah, <laughs> and in red and on the, I, I don't have it blinking yet. So when it's ready, it'll be blinking and moving and such. Uh, but totally uh, check that out. Uh, there, there might be a button where you can learn more about that. So lots of cool stuff. Uh, again, the link, if you want to check this, add some of the stuff to your calendar, check either in the chat if you're here on Twitch or in YouTube. Again, you can go down to the description. But for today, we want to talk about React context. And to do that, I'm going to welcome Jeremy Ward to the stream. Hey, Jeremy, how's it going? Hey, Jeremy. Yeah, I'm doing great. How's it going? Awesome. Yeah, no, it's doing good. Do you want to tell people, just introduce who you are, what you do, all that sort of stuff? Yeah, sure. Um... My name is Jeremy Ward. I'm a senior software developer at uh, Antata, um, and that's a healthcare company. We're helping um, patients and doctors uh, through their journey through cancer uh, care. Um, so it's a pretty fulfilling uh, full-time job to have. Um, we just started doing React uh, not too long ago, so we're bringing in a lot of React devs. Um, and yeah, so. Uh, just did a Iron Yard, the Iron Yard boot camp. It's not around anymore, um, but yeah, did that like seven years ago, and I've been with the the same company since then. So working in healthcare, um, yeah, it's cool. It's awesome stuff. You make me feel like the stuff I'm working on now is kind of <laughs> like like oh man, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it's what all am I do, What am I doing with okay. my life? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's all important, right? I it's just made a chicken <laughs> animation in the last few hours, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, to contemplate my self worth here a little bit. Can, can we demo that instead of uh, <laughs> what we're going through today? I want to see the chicken. <laughs> well, so you, maybe that's a good like segue because you, you're talking about. Uh, we want to mm -hmm. talk about React context today. Why don't right. you just like maybe overview the the topic? Um, mm -hmm. like, what got you into this? What problem you're trying to solve? That sort of thing to to maybe kick us off. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess we uh, we used to do a lot more Ember Ember JS development, um, at least in my small group uh, that we work with. And uh, most recently, we had a project, and it, the dependencies kind of got out of control. Um, so when we started building this React app, as like a proof of concept of of switching from Ember to React, um, we were just kind of hesitant to add any dependencies. So even though everybody in like React loves Redux. And well, I don't know about everybody, but uh, a lot of people. Um, yeah, so we, we were like, OK, we've, we've got the React context now um, built into the language. We don't have to bring any extra dependencies. I think I watched React Wednesday with the uh, forgot his name, the guy from that created Recoil. Oh, Dave um, McCabe. Yes, I watched yep. that one. He was talking about how if, if you have a simple problem, just use the React context. And then you don't have to worry about it being incompatible with like new updates uh, to React. So that's another another bonus to have. Sorry, my uh, my pup just had knee surgery and she's walking on the hardwoods and shouldn't be. Uh -huh. <laughs> give, me, give me one second. You got it. Yeah, 
no problem. Yeah, and if I'll I'll drop a link while he's doing that. If you want to check out the episode we did with Dave Dave McCabe. Good luck you being so fast with that, TJ. That was awesome. I <laughs> see I got it. It's almost like I've done this before. Crazy yeah, enough. <laughs> yeah, but I'll drop the link in the chat if you want to check that out, because recoil is kind of an interesting uh tech uh for solving kind of kind of a similar problem. I don't know, it, it gets complicated. Mm -hmm. It does. It is an interesting. It is an interesting approach, though. But yeah, you know, we'll have to talk more about that someday. All yeah. right. Sorry, Jeremy. Didn't mean to cut cut you yeah. off. Oh no, no worries. Uh, that was kind of my fault or or Paisley's fault. Our little chocolate lab. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So um, where were we? We were talking about React, not bringing in dependencies. Uh, to, so kind of going the safe route to begin with. Um, and you know, if we first started with a super simple, just use state inside of context and um, we just use that for the global state. So we didn't use the only, only state that needed to be shared across multiple nodes of the component tree. Um, another thing we started with, uh, we were, uh, we kind of, a couple of us have been looking into domain driven design. So instead of just shoving everything into one context, we kind of split it up. And so we, if we had like certain um, for the example I used is like authentication or like accounts, you had that context and then like, you know, the, the social media thing, your timeline, you have that context. So kind of splitting everything up that way, but it's also can be shared across multiple components. Um, yeah. So that was kind of the idea uh, to go to get started with that. Yeah. I'm, so I, I know you want to show some of this so maybe we can dive into, uh, you can go ahead and start with that. Cause I, uh, I'm kind of excited for this because context is on my list of like things where okay. I've never really pushed the boundaries, so to say, right? Mm. Like I, <laughs> since I work as a developer advocate, I do a lot of like demos, but that's like sort mm. of like, right. I'm using context in the most simple yeah. way you can think to do it. So I don't run right. into these like problems at scale. So I'm, I'm really curious to see what you have to show. Okay, cool. Yeah, we can go ahead and get started with that. Let me just share the screen real quick. Yep. And it should cool. be up. So you should be good to go. Yeah. All right. So um, just to run through this real quick, React Wednesdays has created a, a social media app. <laughs> um, <laughs> and oh, you can't quite see it. Let me, let me pull this down. There we go. Okay. So now you can see we've got a login button. You can log in the user, log out the user. Um, you've got your timeline here, um, and this is, you know, its own component. And then this column over here is its own component. Same over here. Just kind of did that. It's probably not the best design, but um, just allows us to kind of like prove the point uh, for this demo. And so with this, um, our actions that we have right now, we've already seen this one is log in, log out. And so that changes state. And then you can select a post. And you can see it selects the ID up here. Um, and then you can also select a comment. And you can unfocus it, and that sets everything back to null. Um, so all that's done using two separate contexts, uh, one account context and one timeline context. Um, and so we can go ahead and jump into that. Uh, if you want to look at code, seeing the, the browser isn't as, as fun sometimes. Yeah, let's see how this is done. Um, so, so you're familiar with context and I don't know about the, the watchers and everything, but uh, probably be good to set the stage with like just the basics over. for, for, cause we do have yeah. beginners that pop in here quite a bit. Okay, cool. Well, luckily I already have a tab open for the <laughs> documentation. <laughs> Prepared a little bit for this. Um, so, so. The first sentence, I, I thought this was really good. And that's kind of why I brought this up is uh, it kind of plain and simple tells you what the use of a context is, is for global state. So when, you know, something that's pivotal for your app and it needs to be shared across multiple pages, multiple components, um, just kind of lives everywhere. And um, so that's enough of the documentation. Uh, maybe TJ or Michael can share a link to that in the the chat yep. or somewhere, um, or I guess I could. I can keep going. TJ's got it. Yeah, yeah, got yeah. It. yeah. Keep right. going. I, I got cool. you covered. All right. <laughs> so, um, 
got to give credit where the credit's due. Uh, a lot of the patterns so that I that I kind of picked up on uh, is from Kent C. Dodes. Uh, he's super big in the React community and has a very good blog post. Um, so I kind of grabbed some of his patterns uh, for handling context and kind of, our team kind of it gelled with us a little bit and we just kind of ran with that. Um, so this essentially is how you set up a context. So at the very beginning, you just call react create context. And then what we've done or what we, what we got from the blog post on the internet is, uh, you set up the provider component and inside of here, we've got the initial state. Um, so we're setting a user and is logged in as another another thing of state, and we're just using React's set state here. Um, and then it's just like a nicety or a nice thing to have. We kind of split those out into their own constants. And then you can see this is the constant here um, that comes from the context. So this is the return value of create context. And so you go uh, context dot provider, and that gives you your provider component. You pass in the value that you want, the initial value for that context. And here we have just an object with state and actions. Um, and then if you want to use that context uh, with React hooks, I guess that came out a few years ago now. Um, can't remember exactly when they announced hooks. Last year kind of makes everything a blur. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so to use it, we've created this custom hook, which specifies use this exact context. And these are all exported. So um, is mm -hmm. the exporting two things, is that to support two different ways of using this through hooks or okay. through? Yeah. Yeah, so well, so um, with the context, right, you have a provider and you have a consumer. So the yeah. provider kind of wraps uh, whatever, wherever my webcam is. Uh, whatever <laughs> yeah. part of the, uh, the component tree that needs to consume it. Okay, and then, yeah. mm -hmm, so you, you wrap it in the provider and that's what this, the default export is down here at the bottom. Um, we don't necessarily have to, uh, export this. We could export the context itself up here. Okay. And then inside of our components, we would, we would call the use context hook. And so you'd pretty much be copying this every time, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So this is just kind of a, a helper method to say, hey, I want the account context without having to call this part over here. And so okay. that goes into whatever component that you need to use state from the provider. So that's what would be called a consumer. Um, yeah. So anytime you want to pull state out of the context, you use uh, use context, which grabs the consumer and then uh, you wrap everything in the provider. So kind of like the single source of truth for the state. Um, yeah. Does that clear it up? Is that? Yeah, I think so. Yep. Yeah. And then, so next we can see where we're using the provider. Uh, so in the index.js, you don't have to put these providers at the very top level of your application. It could be in a certain branch of your component tree. Um, but for this demo, we just kind of wrapped it there. Um, yeah, and if you do try to use the consumer, so you use the context um, outside of where you define the provider, it will throw an error and let you know that you need to use a provider for this. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So when you so, when you have nested mm -hmm. providers like that, do you want to talk a little bit about about what that means or what's what's going on? Uh, just to make sure everybody's kind of clear. Nested providers? Oh, okay. Well, you sort of have the account context provider and the timeline mm -hmm. context provider. It might be interesting just to make sure everyone's mental yeah. model on how that works is, is working. Right. Out. Yeah. So, so you can have as, from my understanding, you can have as many contexts as you, as you want. Um, you, I've ran into, before I even started using React context, I ran into using a provider um, without even knowing it. Um, so Material UI is a package I was using. And the theme is actually wrapped up inside of a context. And so you, in the, their documentation, they're like, hey, put this theme provider here. And uh, that lets you use our components, right? Um, so I didn't even know I was using a React context at that time, um, but, but kind of was. Uh, so going back to, I guess, to why we have two of them. 
mm -hmm. um, is we do have uh, two contexts in this one, right? So I was talking about a little bit earlier, domain-driven design. Um, you kind of separate things out by their functionality inside of an app. Um, so that's kind of what we did to begin with, with this one um, and what we did in this demo. So on the left-hand side, all the state, all the global state needed for, um, for the accounts for the user is in that context. And then over on the right-hand side is the timeline. So things like the post, uh, the selected post and the actions to, to change those, that state. Um, so it kind of keeps the separation of concerns uh, there. Yeah, I think not just separation of concerns, but even, I, I mean, this is obviously dumbed down a little bit to make teaching easier, but like in the real world, right, your, your oh, yeah. auth provider, it, it does quite a few things, I have to imagine, right. and your timeline was, and if you don't split them out, yeah. you'll just have complete chaos. Yeah. Yeah, if you're if you're going with um, the the simple like context like this, I yeah, it could could get pretty big pretty quickly, and that's one of, another reason that we kind of moved away from this and more to the reducer pattern um, was the uh, the two we had two contexts in our application and the um, the the scope of it was just getting really large. It was getting really hard to to manage. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's you know. Good, good principles in software, right? Is you kind of start with whatever is the simplest thing that's going to work, and once it becomes painful, then you reevaluate everything. Um, so that's why that's one of my favorite things about context is it's super simple. It, it gets the job done, and you you don't always need to install Redux or, or Recoil just to get an application going and to have global state. Yep. Um, yeah. So do you want to, you want, I mean, we can, we can go over this timeline context a little bit. Since you can go here. into it whatever order you wanted. I think I was more just kind of calling out that like they, since they kind of nest that to. way, like, yeah, mm. timeline is sort of in the account yeah. context, right? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't thought about that, but uh, theoretically the, the timeline context could pull from the account context. Right. Um, and in some ways too, it's like the account context is subsumes it, meaning like if the account context changes, you really do want the timeline context to change mm -hmm. where it gets kind of cool in the nesting too. Yeah. 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 I haven't even thought about that. I've just kept them as separate, separate buckets of state. And uh, have you ever ran into a use case where you needed to? Quite like a have, few. Really? <laughs> yeah. Interesting. That's, uh, uh, can we, can we just stop this demo? No. <laughs> that sounds, that sounds more interesting than what we got. No, no, authentication is a great example. So I really um, like yeah, how you yeah. did that, right? Because you yeah, might think okay. about it like maybe you have all this other state, but if authentication right. changes on the top, it, that you none of that to. should matter. You want it gone. Yeah. And that's like a really cool way to mm. think about it is that it might be global state, but you're sort of nesting it and saying like this thing yeah. is only really relevant in the context of this staying yeah. the same. So anyway, mm -hmm. thoughts? Yeah, no, that's pretty cool. Um, we didn't have that use case, but uh, yeah, I like it. Uh, it's kind of something I didn't think about. Yeah. Um, yeah. So wait, to uh, dig into that, sorry, just for one second. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it, does that happen automatically? Like, so, okay, I like the, I agree, like having auth as the most, most global one makes sense. Cause mm -hmm. I imagine like if your user changed, you probably, the timeline almost needs to change as well. Right. Cause I, like, presumably, mm -hmm. obviously like this is a fictitious app and such, but I would imagine <laughs> in most, I would imagine in most situations, if the user changes, mm -hmm. you kind of want to refetch posts or like the old posts are now yeah. like no longer relevant. Um, so does that like, would that change like automatically or like you'd have to like mm -hmm. probably manually somehow like your, well, I guess your timeline would have to like subscribe or, uh, consume the auth so that it knew mm -hmm. that there was a change so that it took action. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm talking out loud. I'm just trying to like get my yeah, no. <laughs> brain on the same page. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to wrap my brain around a context dependent on another context too. I'm trying to think of a use case for it. Uh, or like, I mean, the auth is a good use case, but just how exactly that would work. Um, cause I'm thinking now, um, most of the time I would, I would handle the state changing outside of the context. Um, Right, so like if the user user changed, you would have a hook somewhere else that would go off and fetch uh, new uh, new posts, new, a new timeline, and you know maybe at the beginning of that action, you would you would null out or like set the the current timeline to to an empty array, 
And then as that request is going, you would have loading and then, and, but that would be outside the context. Um, yeah, think about yeah. it another way though, just for fun, if you don't mind, which is that yeah. if, if your okay. timeline context, you know, you could set it to an empty array, which is one way of saying it doesn't, ex it's mm -hmm. not got data anymore. Or you could just build a new one saying, you know what, mm -hmm. if the authentication changes, mm -hmm. I need a new timeline context. Yeah. And that's where yeah. the interesting part of that comes together. Cause yeah, one way mm -hmm. you're, one way you're, you're sort of managing the state of the timeline. Another way you're saying, no, this is a new timeline. Anyway, mm -hmm. there's two different ways yeah. to think about the same problem, but it's, it's kind of yeah. fun. Context allows some of that uh, to the thought process to go through too. Yeah. So where would you, would you do the fetching inside of your context for the new timeline? It's a good question. I, so personally, I'm a bit like you, I probably wouldn't keep it too much in the context to, to do the actual fetching, but I would argue that like the result of that being here and things being mm -hmm. dependent upon it downstream is a really good thing, but yeah. that's all. I just, I actually yeah. thought the reason I brought it up all together is I actually kind of thought it was cool the way you had it set up and it made a good point. I'm just like yeah. something people could use. So I, uh, you yeah. know, good on the demo. It was just more throwing something out. There. <laughs> I didn't mean to derail you. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, anytime a new, new, uh, new idea comes in, now I want to just completely dump the entire demo and we'll just work on that. We'll just go through this problem and see how, <laughs> see how that works out. <laughs> All right, let's, let's go see, ahead and uh, stick with your demo. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the shiny, the shiny object, uh, monkey brain I got, I guess. Um, Okay. Uh, yeah. So maybe if we have time at the end of this, we can get back to that or see how it work in the new context once we get there. Um, so yeah, so since we're in the timeline context, it's, I've created this helper method, which brings in Faker and does some things to generate some lorem if some kind of stuff for the, the post. Um, but we just set that as initial post and the new topic, we could we could change that, right? We could regenerate it each time uh, the user changes. Um, so yeah, and then we just had it's, it's just the same as the auth context. We're just using use state for now, uh, setting the initial values. We have the same state and actions um, going on, and yeah. So those are the contexts, and so let's try and find where we're actually using uh, these contexts. Um, okay. So here's the, the first example that comes in. Um, so we have use timeline and this is pulling in the state for the selected posts and the selected comments. And this is the, uh, the left-hand side that we're seeing on the application. Maybe I can move this over here. Okay. So this is, uh, this column over here is pulling from the state there. Um, and so you could argue, you know, the state could just live in this, this app component there. It's not a good use case of it. Um, but then if we go into timeline, um, you know, it's separated out. Uh, we have the specific timelines and you can see we're pulling out state. Um, let me bring the timeline context over here. Maybe it'd be better to go down. Yeah, and I think like this. Actually, I'm curious what your. Uh, this is some slick uh, keyboard shortcuts you're doing there. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, there is uh, I, I switch I switch editors uh, at least two or three times a year, um, but one that's kind of stuck with me is I did Space Max one time, which is a Vim flavored Emacs. Okay. And now I use. And if I go back to Vim, they have those key bindings there. If I they they just now have it in VS Code, it's just an extension that you add on. And it's all like mnemonic stuff. Uh, yeah, so just kind of shows I, you what you can do, right? I worked with a developer for years who would only use VI. Uh, and to be yeah. clear, I I don't mean an editor with Vim shortcuts. I mean yeah. everything was in uh, every file individually edited in VI with no help because he uh, I don't know no no oh. plugins <laughs> no plugins no help no uh, no code shortcutting no highlighting I think he felt he was somehow better uh, for doing it right I didn't yeah. feel the same <laughs> <laughs> well but yeah, I mean definitely. you you learn this stuff then you get on a stream and you can show off your sweet keyboard you definitely shortcuts can show I mean off. like That's true. Just... <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah the it, I switched from from Vim because of 
uh, you know, the, the IntelliSense, so like the auto-completing and stuff. Right. And now that they've like, they've kind of extracted that out into its own language server. So it sits outside. So recently when I was, I was using Vim like a couple of months ago and I still had the language server. So I was able to get the auto completion from VS code in Vim. And that was a pretty, pretty sweet game addition. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a game changer for sure. Um, and also I used to have a less beefier computer. So screen sharing and VS code did not, it, it crashed a couple of times. That Even was. on a beefy computer, it's still kind of rough some yeah. days. <laughs> I think it's also a testament to VS Code that it's been able to bring in like people that are familiar with these other like patterns mm -hmm. and, and such. And like they somehow have found a way to mesh all that together. And like I, I swear, like on this stream, I can't remember the last time I saw someone bring up an editor that wasn't VS Code, even though might mm -hmm. have totally different approaches to keyboard shortcuts and themes right. and all this stuff. It's like somehow managed to become a uh, like a single spot for holding all that stuff that's yeah. crazy impressive to me yeah it's 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 pretty sweet and it's pretty extensible i think that's another thing that uh, i like about vs code right it's like all written in javascript so i feel like i can can change it poor girl you all hear you all yeah. hear the dog <laughs> feel bad for her. yeah she's she really hates being locked up with uh after having that surgery um yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, back to the, the demo, unless y'all want to <laughs> geek out about VS Code some more. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't have to be just one. All right. Keep yeah, going. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, I can, if, if you haven't had any other editors, I can go back to Vim and see what you'd like. <laughs> no, we're good. Like, we're good. What is this? Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so this is just, I guess, a good example. Um, we're not using selected posts here, or I guess we are. Yeah, no, we're not using selected posts. We're pulling out post state. Um, so let me go ahead and delete those. And um, yeah, so we're pulling out the post state and we're able to use it down here in the component. And we're able to use this action and pass that down into another component as well. Um, so that's where the, the handle click comes from. So like, clicking this, uh, the comment in this app is also a, a, an item component. So it does the exact same thing, passes in the, uh, the context action and uh, changes that. Um, but kind of state being dependent, uh, we can go ahead and say, oh, look, we found a bug because we're clicking these posts over here and the selected post is changing, but the, the right hand side is still focused on the comment. Um, and so that's just the way I set up the app to, to do that, uh, just to kind of prove the point, but, uh, being so, so essentially what's happening is right. You select the post, it shows up, you select the comment. Um, but in the right hand side component for whatever reason, whatever reason that other developer basic programmer decided to write it that way, it, it shows the comments first and then goes down and shows the post. Uh, so technically we have to null out the, or like reset the selected comment to get the new selected post to show. Um, so you can do that inside of a context. And this comes with a little bit of a warning of be careful with use effect. And, and, and that's just my opinion. I don't know um, how other people feel about it. Uh, have y'all been bitten by a use effect in the wild yet? With great power comes great responsibility. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've been confused uh, by use effect many times. Yeah. But I see like, so basically what you're saying is this, this thing is going to need to react. It needs to know when the selected post changes to null that out. So yes. like, intuitively because that's where my brain would go to as well my first thought is oh well that's use effect right that's what you do yeah. to do mm -hmm. that in react so i would have wrote exactly what you wrote right yeah. there like that would have been my initial thought at least exactly yeah i mean that's and again we were just going uh with the simplest thing possible right so the first thing your mind comes up with just try and use that and uh so essentially saying whenever select posts or selected post changes to make sure that the selected comment is nothing, essentially. 
Um, so I think the uh, the hot reloading got was broken because I brought in Tailwind. And it's not using. I don't know what happened. I didn't have time to figure that out. Um, so now if we go in and we select, we can select different posts. It shows up. Select a comment, and if we select a new post, it shows up, and the comment went back to null. We did it. Ship it. <laughs> Ship it. Okay. <laughs> Just uh, get get uh, get the stash and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Push it. Deploy. We're good to go. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. So this uh, it was we we in in our group uh, when we were building the the React apps we we did fine with the use effects for a couple of times, um, but the the more our app grew and the more complex it got. We ended up with a couple of use effects inside of the context. And some of those use effects were dependent on other ones. And we, it, it, there was one time where like we passed in an initial value, right? To the context so we could do testing a little bit easier. easier. And I couldn't get it to do it exact. I couldn't remember exactly the incantation to make it happen again. But it was a weird bug and essentially passed in the initial and it nulled out something when it wasn't supposed to be. So it nulled out the initial value that was coming in or something like that. I can't remember, but anyway, we, we kind of, we kind of saw this and we're like the, the use effects inside the context and dependent on global state is kind of, it's, it's, it's a double edged sword, right? Like you can cut yourself pretty quickly with it. Uh, kind of like Michael said, great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Um, so we were, that is when we, we got it to work, we shipped it. Um, but then one week we kind of decided to do a proof of concept of like using user reducer and kind of changing this simple context into, uh, a user reducer, um, context. This one, uh, didn't have the separation of concerns with multiple contexts. So we didn't have user reducer in multiple contexts. But we were able to, you know, inside the state, we had to, we separated it there. So inside the state, you had like accounts. Instead of using my hands, we can can use the code. Um, I, I'm, get I'm all that. about the gesticulations. We're all good. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll see what uh, maybe the timeline context would look like using the reducer uh, pattern. And so let's see, let's call this, let's call it the, the uh, I don't know, Thanos uh, context. Um, and you know what, we'll just, we'll just go ahead and copy all this because essentially the same thing. Cool, we've done it. We're all done now. Um, <clears throat> okay, so. To do this, we're still going to have. Oh, I've got to do. Got to change all these concepts. Oop. We named it. We named it Thanos. Okay. So now we have a new context. And we'll delete all that for now. Um, so uh, the use reducer is a hook and. We'll just bring up the documentation for that one real quick. Um, and essentially how it goes, you have an initial state um, and then you have a reducer. Uh, in many cases, it's a uh, it's just a switch statement. That's the simplest way to get it done. Um, I actually just saw a, an article and it's kind of what we did with our, uh, our reducers. But instead of having a switch cape, uh, statement, you can use object literals um to kind of do it that way but then you have an object that has a function assigned to a key um so you're just pulling that 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 function out of it and um it's getting closer and closer there. to my way tj they're just going to get there eventually yeah right. <laughs> closer to what i i did one just for fun one time where i just showed that because people keep finding new ways to say like, this is the function I want to call. And I was like, you know, you yeah. can just pass a function in a dispatch and you can actually apply it because we yeah. pass literals now that look up into an object to find the function that we want to apply uh, yeah. instead of a switch mm. statement. 
Anyway, okay. not saying it's a good idea, yeah. but it's kind of fun because I I'm only I mentioned it because I actually saw the same post you were talking about, and it's been okay. there's been a couple making arounds where people are showing more and more ways of like, look, you could automatically map the functions. Yeah, yeah. you can. There's like a million ways to do it, but as <laughs> yeah. you pointed out, the interesting part is you need to do something here, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's and and this is kind of where so the more and more we pushed, the more. I might for like a bigger application, I, I think start with a context, right? And once you start getting a little bit more complex or if your team grows and you start bringing in more developers, um, it, it might be might be worth it to use something like Recoil or uh, Redux Toolkit, uh, something that you can just say, read up on the way of doing, you know, state handling here. And that's how we kind of, kind of do it here in this application too. Um, yeah, I don't know uh it's kind of a it's kind of up in the air right now in our team i don't know um how y'all feel about that if y'all would reach for a context in certain places or uh, just go ahead and reach for something off the shelf i would say not mutually exclusive um yes so you know redux and recoil and everything do do a job and especially sometimes we lump things together but their state as in the global state mm -hmm. that we want the application to be in. There might be state that's really local and transient to what a user is doing yeah. at that moment, which you don't want to store in like some big store. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I think there's really good yeah. reasons for, for both. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that's what makes this problem hard. Is it's, it's really hard when you give concrete so, uh, like recommendations on because it also depends on the type of app you're building yeah. as well, mm -hmm. um, because it like context is i think still probably the best starting point just because it is still Definitely. built in it's it's simple uh, mm -hmm. and it's sufficient for a whole lot of what people are building and then once you like you said i like the way you phrased it earlier like you don't necessarily need to know about these other things until you hit those problems right uh, cuz then you know you need to do something sort of thing yeah yeah once it becomes a pain point then then that's when you might need to look for something else for sure and if you can express the problem, right? Like if you yeah. if you're already picking a framework and you can't explain what it solves for you, maybe right. it's time to not do that just yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why do you Why do you want to use that? Oh, because right. because it looks it's cool. It's fun. What the cool kids do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the the common answer is I saw it on a blog post. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. I blame TJ. I saw it on React Wednesday. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. So so you have. Uh, getting back to the use reducer uh, way of doing things. Um, the reason we went with this pattern um, was going back to those use effects, right? We wanted to change state, maybe change multiple pieces of state, but not have, uh, you know, consequences of changing one particular piece of state, right? Um, and if that is your use case, right? Like we're talking about, if that's the problem you're running into, then maybe a reducer would be better because it's it's a single function that changes the state and it can change multiple pieces of state at one time. Um, so to do that, you just need the initial state, the reducer, and then you pass it into the new nifty use reducer hook. So let's just go back over to, to Thanos context. I forgot I named it that. Um, and so the initial state, um, so to keep things separate, we'll, we'll, we'll say this is the timeline state. And it had post, the old one, the old uh, state had post, selected posts and comments. So we'll just go ahead and do exactly that. Initial, uh, this is when the elevator music would be great. I've been talking for the longest time that I want to have something like that for the stream handy to mm. put up. Like the bigger one that comes up is when people like have to npm install something. Oh gosh! <laughs> right, like so I, I need like yep. the, something that can play on screen. Yeah, because uh, it comes up. Oh yeah, this is on this is on Twitch, right? Maybe maybe next Wednesday y'all uh, write a little plugin so that the chat can. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. Play with you at the same time. Um, so do we want to do the reducer with the switch case statement, or do we want to try and do the object literal? Um, I don't think we're going to do the function like Michael was saying. <laughs> uh, I do, I do, I was able to actually, that's a super interesting thing. Maybe we'll just go ahead and I was going to do that at the end. We can go ahead and talk about that. It might 
you know, be completely out of context. Um, <laughs> I see what you did there. Hey. <laughs> I, I'd say go with whatever you're most comfortable yeah. with. Go with, go with simple. Yeah. I think I think your your point on making sure people come away with a good understanding of context is, is probably okay. more important. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Yeah, we can. Um, yeah, we can talk about that later. But the, the other point was functions and JavaScript are objects as well, which means functions can have attributes. And I think that's kind of what you were talking about, of passing functions into. Uh, the world will never know, Jeremy. The world will never know. Right, you're right. <laughs> okay, so the reducer, um, for sake of time, let's just do the, uh, the case statement. So we'll copy this out. We'll just get the function. And down here, we'll have state and dispatch. I think I can do this. There we go. And we have the initial state up top and the reducer, um, a third argument that I haven't ever had to use. So we'll just ignore that for now. Um, and let's see, so what are, our, what are our actions? What's something that we can use? Uh, we'll just say set, set post and that's wild. And inside of there, so the reducer function, um, it's good to point out, it takes in two arguments, the current state of the application, and then the action that's dispatched to the reducer. Um, and so in there, we're just going to make a, in, inside of our action, inside of this case branch, we're just gonna go ahead and put all of the, make a copy of the current state. Uh, so we're not missing anything. And then we'll go ahead for set post. We want to change the timeline. Um, and I like to go ahead and make a copy of that as well. And so we'll have the selected post um, is the action dot payload. So is that everything that happens on our, our set post action? Um, let's see. So when we set a post over here, um, we, we just set the selected post, but then we have this use effect, right? So yeah, it you have out to like comment. null out the comment. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go ahead and add that in. Um, and that is how it would be done with the reducer. And... One thing I like about the, this pattern sort of already is the reducers almost kind of like self documenting in the sense that like, it's mm -hmm. nice to be. It's nice to just see a quick like these are the actions that can occur on this yeah. sort of thing, like in a just convenient spot there versus trying to like parse through a bunch of use effects and such. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that's one of the main benefits that I've seen from the reducers. Um, there's no one. There's no side effects. Um, of course, our team got bitten by that. Um, so I'm big on not having side effects in the on global state, at least. I think in local state and like just a couple of components, um, that's that's completely fine. But once you start having side effects when you change global state, um, I start to get a little weary. So yeah, that keeps kind of everything kind of flowing together. Uh, another thing that we like to do at our team with our team is um, kind of connect these things with user actions, right? So um, if a user is like setting or like an action that happens in the application, not just users, but you know, if, if a user clicks something um, and it needs to change global state, then you dispatch a certain action for that event that, that occurs. Um, and that's a easy way to kind of think about how, how to handle it. Um, okay, let's go ahead and grab this here. Do the same thing. Um, so our old context didn't, didn't null out the selected post, but you could, uh, pretty easily. And that would just keep the state kind of clean. Um, maybe, maybe not depends on what, what, uh, benefit that would be. 
Is that going to mess you Michael, up, you... nulling, out, nulling out your selected post when you change your selected comment? That's great. Com that's a great question. Let's find out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think it is the way the app was written uh, in All a right. real world context. Maybe. <laughs> Just because it's only um, displaying one or the other. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, I think uh, where was that focused item? So you can see here the way everything's done. Okay, That's it's just why. an if statement. Just Got it. Through <laughs> throwing something together real quick to. Uh, no, to no, it's all good. I just was yeah. trying to save you <laughs> debugging time. If it. Uh... Yeah. Um, no, it's uh, it, it, it's it's meant to to work that way. Um, all right, cool. So you could do it, but I mean. You know, if oh, you no, it was totally me yeah. just trying to make sure that you are not going to have to spend your time debugging because I wanted you. To oh no, I, I hear you for sure. Um, but yeah, so I mean, if I was if I was uh, you know refactoring this for a production app, I probably wouldn't change an effect. You know, change the side effect, right? Because um, then you'd want your test to pass and everything, and everything to still act the same. Um, So just like the other ones, we have to add the Thanos context and we can still leave those other contexts in there for now. And of course, Thanos is going to wrap everything because it's Thanos. Um, let's see. So then we go to the timeline here. Nope. Timeline and components. And use Thanos context. Okay, so now we're using our new context. And so it had um, the provider, it had state and dispatch. So the way this would look here, um, oops, not quite like that. So we'd still pull our state out like this, but then you would have currently have timeline. So we're destructuring again. Um, and then instead of actions, you would just have dispatch. Now let's go ahead and get rid of this. And the app is gonna completely break now, um, but that's okay. So we got P there. Okay, so, so to dispatch or change the, the actions, we're going to pass in the type because that's what our case statement is switching on and it's going to be set posts. Um, and then the payload is going to be P. Okay. Um, and if we go back, uh oh, check, uh, huh. Import null. <laughs> Good job, auto import. Where did that come from? Type checks. Is that a, is that a real it's amazing. thing? Yeah. Ah, nice. I also cannot spell. To be honest, like as amazing as computers are in 2021, they should really be able to figure that out for us. There's, it's amazing to me sometimes in VS Code where like I'm trying to type like click and then it thought I meant like click context 3D provider image, like something like that, right? Like, and you don't think like VS Code would have some algorithm in it and it says like, this is something that's used by 0.1% of people. Right. So can take, <laughs> can take like three quarters probably of not what before. you meant. You probably just meant number, right? Like, yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, that would, that would probably help out. Um, that's, it's kind of interesting. Okay, there it goes. That, that scared me a little bit. Um, so, You've got a talk coming up on this pretty soon, right? The dev tools. Yeah. So we'll just, we'll go ahead and dive into it. So um, you can see the Thanos context and then it has the context if, provider down here. If possible, if you can bump up the font size of just the oh. dev tools itself. Is that, uh, okay. Oh, nope, that is just uh, changing. Oh, it doesn't work. Uh, that's. It's just changing the tabs. That's that's a little I, weird. It actually changes everything, but the React Dev tools don't seem to be reactive to the uh, size, even though like the regular windows and stuff are. Yeah, yeah no worries. As long as you explain what's going on. Um, but yeah. that's that's yeah, funny yeah. that it doesn't, uh, Maybe they don't support that. Maybe we should uh, write a pull request for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can see the exact state that we, well, maybe you can't on the, the screen. You got supervision. 
Um, but the, the exact state from the uh, context is here. And so since we haven't connected everything in the application, just wanted to see if this still works. So if we click this, it should change our selected post down here from null uh, to the actual one. And yeah. it did. Yeah, I could see I could see it changing at least. So nice. we're good. <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah, you can see that the action is being dispatched and it's been moved everywhere. So um, I think we have enough time. We can probably go ahead and, and, and pull that state out of out of there. Yeah, um, let's, let's do it. Yeah. I don't know if y'all have an an outro you want to do. Um, so feel free to cut me off whenever. <laughs> Now, usually we just wrap up with if people have any questions in chat, now's a great time to get them in. If you have any questions about what we've been doing or context in general, feel free to suggest mm -hmm. those and we can chat about that. And usually then we just wrap up with some you know, links and that sort of thing. So feel free to, to wrap this up. I'm sort of curious what the, the other bit of implementation of this looks like. <laughs> okay, so this is the wrong one. That's not that could be my anything. new thing, TJ. We could have guests on, and then I could do mangled versions of all their implementations. Since yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> um, if you really want to confuse everybody, here's how you could do this. Yeah. <laughs> here's yeah. how I accomplish the same thing, but in a way more confusing way. <laughs> <laughs> Great and for I production. Will... <laughs> yeah, this is, this is production ready code. You can, you can ship this for sure. Um, yeah, so I will definitely uh, before or sometime this week, by the end of the week, try to have a finished product of this up on GitHub. Um, maybe in the, the rerun on YouTube or something, I'll post it in the comments or just send it to you, TJ. I don't know. Yeah, um, either, either works wanna, just fine. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So this might work. So all we had to do was, was change where we're pulling the state from. So the timeline inside of the Thanos context state, um, and we're just pulling selected. Uh, looks like we still got to keep this. Sorry. Um, for now, and so yeah. So now the side should work. Oh look, I think it auto refresh, auto refresh. So when we select this one, now it shows up over there. And this doesn't work because it's two different contexts and they're, they're separate states. So yep. getting there though. Uh, yeah, it's getting there. Um, it's a good point though in itself, you know, that they're, they're two mm -hmm. separate contexts and they're living side by side, but they're partitioned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so yeah, if we can make that work, um, it's just another dispatch of an action. What do you say? Make it happen. Do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Where was that? Um, so it's in a comment, so if a comment is selected. I think it's up here. Who wrote this? It's a, no, I'll go lay down. It's in your click handle ah, on line seven. Yep. There it is. It's the benefits of pair programming sometimes. Indeed. Well, and especially when you're presenting, because you've got about yeah. 300 different things in your mind. And right. um, I think in the last one I did, TJ saw at least two thirds of all the uh, parentheses I missed. So that was very helpful. <laughs> cool. So we'll go ahead and, and comment this out now. Um, we'll destructure dispatch from the Thanos context. And oops. Here it is. Handle click. So now we'll dispatch. Uh, and that's an object type set comment payload. And it is just comment. I feel like, too, especially with React stuff, because I feel like just the nature of JSX means like nested parentheses and curlies. That's mm. the thing that tends to always get me for some reason. That's <laughs> that's my go-to live coding issue. <laughs> right. Yeah. So uh, everything's working back to normal. Um, well, except this one up here, and we could still move the auth context into the same same reducer context, or you know, like Michael said earlier, 
uh, you might want to keep those separate. You might want to just have the authentication in its own context and then uh, make changes to the Thanos context, uh, you know, if something changes there. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's mostly what I have for today. Yeah, no, I like this a lot. I think um, it's, it's funny, too, because I can totally see the thought process you went through because like my brain works the same way. I would, my first thought would be to use effect, but I actually like seeing use reducer. And I also think like this would, again, this is a simple example, but I feel like that this pattern would scale quite a bit better. Like at, just adding more action seems far more readable yeah. in this context than yeah. piling on use effects till the end of time. Yeah, for sure. Um, and definitely like the object literals that come into it, then you can actually, uh, I think I posted about it on Twitter. You can, you can separate out your actions by their context. So like an account reducers and timeline reducers and still share them in the same context, but then spread them into the same um, object literal instead of one huge 40 lined uh, case statement. Yeah. So it doesn't so, get absurd. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Well, it was, it was super fun, guys. That was, uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Cool. It's good stuff. Yeah. Contexts are very cool. There are, um, you mentioned, I'll, I'll only hit this one second. You mentioned sort of Redux and Recoil and other things before, mm -hmm. and they do some things that the cool thing about contexts are that you're re-rendering the children underneath it when something changes. And that means that you can absorb it. The bad thing can be on, you mentioned at scale TJ, that since you're re-rendering mm -hmm. the children underneath it, if, the, if it gets big, that's tricky. So Redux and even those use context behind the scenes, but they're doing them in such a way to kind of share something that is more more observable or a subscribable rather than just a value. But this is uh, just saying this for anybody like kind of listening, like understanding the context would be the first step to understanding how all of those other frameworks work because yeah. they're really, this is how they're distributing that same information. So it's cool stuff. It's great stuff to know. And I thought it was a great presentation. Yeah. So thank you. Cool. Cool. Well, one thing we'd like to wrap up with, Jeremy, is just like any sort of plugs you might have. Like if people want to follow you, ask any other questions, learn more about this. Do you have any links you want me to share? Um, that sort of thing? Yeah. Uh, I mean, mostly just on Twitter um, for, for tech. I've kind of partitioned my Twitter just to be tech Twitter. Um, so it's kind of nice that way. Um, but yeah, at Basic Programmer um, there and um, you can find me at basic programmer at dev.2 for any uh, blog posts that I'll share there. Um, yeah, I think those are great places to, to funnel in. And if you have any more questions, um, this is from a uh, blog post. So if you have any questions specific to this, um, maybe, maybe we can link that blog post and you can ask it directly there. Yeah, I will start to grab those in. I've got your your Twitter in. Oh, you're fast. You're fast. Got the blog post. <laughs> yeah, but he's done this, <laughs> this, he said. I've done this before, yeah. and I, also I can kind of anticipate what people are gonna uh, share right. as well, right? That's true. Um, so yeah, we're dropping the links in Twitch, and then we'll make sure if you're in YouTube watching this afterwards, we'll drop them down in the description as as well. Uh, Mike, do you have anything you want to plug on your end? No, I just wanted to say thanks again for having you out. Um, if you do want to reach out to us, we can find us at Digital Primates. But to be honest, at this point, this is Jeremy's presentation. I think he did a great job. So thank you. Hopefully everyone goes, takes a look at the blog. And um, I think there's some cool stuff to be learned here. Yep. And I will just drop the link one more time to the React Wednesdays. Let me grab that in here homepage again. We do this every week. So come check us out. Come hang out. If you're watching this on YouTube, come join us live. You can ask questions. Uh, it's, it's kind of... I don't know. I have fun. So you can come join us at least. Keep us company. We have a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, Jeremy, one more time. I definitely learned yeah. quite a bit from this. So I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for thanks for having me on. It was uh it was fun. All right, cheers. Cool. See you all in the future. Yep. Well, until next week, everybody. See you. Take care, everyone.